I must ask Aparna ma'am, you know, what does it take every day? What is your day-to-day -day life like? You know, what does it take to, uh, to deliver and... Welcome, welcome. Is this, uh, Richard, let me ask you, is this your first time around at Fiki Frames? Or you've been here before? It's my second time. It's your second time yeah. around. Lovely. And lots has changed, clearly for the better. It was a different hall, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she has a wicked sense of humor. We all know that. And also a wicked way of portraying her characters. And she's so fine in her performances. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Richard Chadda. One round of applause again, please. So the next person I would like to call on stage, and I humbly say this, I think she is fantastic at uh, whatever she does, and she does a lot of it. I've had the opportunity of working with her and her team in um, a series called Hakse. I was part of a feature film called Azhar. And I must say, you know, during the course, I've always seen that she's always delivered at the same time you know, been part of each and every scrutiny or anything that can better the script or the whole product entirely. Ladies and gentlemen, she doesn't need any introduction, but please, a big round of applause for Miss Ekta Kapoor. Thank you, thank you, everybody. And to moderate this, welcome, Ikta, ma'am. Uh, we're glad that you're part of Hickey Frames 2024, and it's absolutely an honor. And we are celebrating you guys. And I must say, uh, we need to celebrate you guys every single day. Uh, without further delay, guys, the moderator for the evening is going to be Mr. Vikram Chandra, founder, editor, G Technologies. Can I have Mr. Chandra? So over to you, sir. My God, I'm intimidated to be sitting in the middle of this panel. So great to be here. Uh, and I want to just start by getting straight into it. I know it's one of the final sessions today. And a lot of people will be wanting to head off at some point. So I'm just going to start off by asking you people about the evolution of the industry. Is this echoing? Yes. Or is that my? Check one, two, three, four. Check. That's better. I'm just going to steal your mic, Richard, if you don't mind. <laughs> and I'll pass it on to you. All right. Look, the entire entertainment and the media industry has changed so much. The role of women has changed so much. The fact that there are leaders like you, uh, obviously making a, playing a major role in transforming everything, is something that's clear. Uh, it's also would be wrong to believe that because we have a few leaders, everything has changed for everyone and it's a dramatically different place for all women so before we go any further let me just try and get from you the state of the industry how much has changed how much still needs to change would you like to go first aparna and then we'll go this way um so it's it's definitely the the whole industry has gone through a paradigm shift I distinctly remember when I had started out about 22, 23 years ago, uh, you know, I'd probably be the only woman on sets at that time. Um, you know, often ignored, uh, wouldn't be taken for outdoor skeds because, you know, uh, I'd become a nuisance. I wouldn't be able to share a room with anyone. How would they organize a toilet? And therefore, I wouldn't get the credit on screen. It was, uh, those were tough days. From then to now, there's been a paradigm shift. Just the number of women who are now in front of and behind the camera 
It's incredible, and I also want to acknowledge the role of streaming in it. It's really democratized the industry, the kind of avenues, the opportunities that have opened up. It's just absolutely beautiful. However, I also wanted to point out that, uh, you know, last year in 2023, the World Economic Forum had put out a global gender gap report. And as for that, if women were to achieve parity in this world, it would take at least 131 years. Um, but I feel in India, we've made some long strides, uh, you know, whether it is uh, getting 44%, whether it is women getting 44% medals in the Asian Games or 100 women behind the Chandrayaan-3. Uh, we've made some great strides, but a lot needs to be done. Um, you know, at Prime Video, we partner on a report that Ormax Media and Film Companion put out on gender representation. Uh, and as for that, out of... Uh, 131 CXO positions that exist in media and entertainment, only 13% are occupied by women. Uh, out of the uh, over 150 uh, shows and films that they studied, uh, and 750 HOD positions, only 12% occupied by women. So we still have a long, long way to go. Uh, and I just wanted to put out a small insight that when women are at the helm of affairs, when women are commissioning content, there are more women who find jobs both in front of and behind the camera. The gaze is different, the lens is different. So we still have a lot of work to do. We've made some great strides. Great. Um, Ekta, would you, would you also feel that Oh, the changes are, of course, accelerating, and OTT may have had a may have a factor in it. But did the change start earlier? When did it start from film? Did it start from television? Did it start in other areas also? And if so, what, to your mind, was the inflection point where people said, "We are not, actually there's no difference," uh, in, in, and nobody's going to be thinking twice about the fact that is it a female director or a male director? Because that's what actually you should aspire to. That it's not even a talking point. Who's the director? So before we get into being gender agnostic, what's really important is to know that the commerce of films or television starts from the basic genesis whose story it is. So when you tell more stories about women, there are more uh, writers and directors. While I'd love to be politically correct and say every story is gender agnostic, that you need sometimes a female lens to a story, and uh, television, I thought, created that base for a lot of women to find a safe space to work because a lot of their stories were told. And uh, movies used to have the hero, the villain, and the heroine would m mostly be there for songs. Television had the heroine and the vamp, and the heroes would be there for the sweet scenes in the middle, you know? Sometimes even death scenes. So, so that really helped. But you know, I'd like to point out something that I feel more and more is happening. Uh, while there are more women behind the scenes and all of us have taken uh, stronger positions to see that there is lesser gender bias when it comes to having women getting equal opportunity, in movies, more and more, it's becoming difficult to make films about women. I'm just making a film called The Crew and there was so much love for the promo. And I can't even tell you the amount of people who've told me that who will watch a film about three women? Ab isme teen hero hote the story would be totally different. This mindset can only change by changing the commerce of it. And that me and Rhea as two female producers are extremely um, dedicated to because when the commerce changes, the kind of films change, the length changes, more women work. So I think it's give and, uh, give and take. And um, while I feel TV has changed and streaming because the likes of Parna and Monica has changed a lot, film still is a tough challenge. I'm actually interested to hear what you just said and somewhat alarmed because there was a perception a few years ago that female-oriented movies and serials are actually becoming easier to produce, easier to market, easier to sell. You're saying that's not the case. Yeah, not the case. It's changed again after COVID. It becomes far tougher because it's easier to make a slightly more 
misogynistic, if not at least a very m m uh, uh, full of machism kind of film, then making a film celebrating womanhood or feminism. I mean, the word feminism is almost a taboo now in movies, but it's so scary because we as women producers want to support even a storyline which gives you a certain amount of change. But then, like I said, we'll be at it and let's see what happens. Richard, that, that from that view from behind the screen, what's it like in front of the screen? Because there was a perception that, you know, female, act, uh, 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 female, female actors are getting a chance to do a wide range of different sort of movies. Options were coming their way, which would not have happened earlier. How has it been for you? I'm, I'm actually really uh, uh, lucky because I got to play very different parts uh, in my life and very sort of risky and controversial and sort of uh, interesting parts, but none of them have been regular. So I can't really speak to that. But I think that th yeah, things are changing, things are moving slowly. Uh, but I have to agree with Ekta here, till there is a response from the audience, which is you guys, very little can change because everything becomes a showbiz part, the business part of the, uh, the filmmaking sort of overwhelms everything else eventually. You have to make things that are, uh, I'm not saying you have to necessarily compromise on quality, but you have to make things that are accessible, that people want to pay money to watch, and that will drive the change. The storytelling, yes, of course. The stories will, the, the people will only come if the stories are nice. I mean, in most cases. Kabi-kabi ulta bhi hota hai. But I mean, we've seen, we've seen movies and others made about matches more, about some of the other themes, and they've done really well. Um, how long, how far away are we from the position that women are going to be able to, obviously you're, you'll be creating the movies, acting in, in, in them, what, what would it take to get more and more of those women-dominated themes to really become the norm? And you don't have to think twice about it. And it's not less marketable. How far are we from that? Someone censoring me. <laughs> no. I'm just saying, I think I... Uh, I forgot the question. No, I'm saying that how long do you think it will be where the person making, is it the situation right now that if it's a female director, a female producer, females who are working behind the scene, or a female-oriented movie, it still, does that still matter or is that not a factor today? I mean, it is a factor because when you try and go and sell this film, that suppose you've produced a film with a female director and a female producer, uh, if you go and try and sell the film, they'll ask ki hero kaun hai. Very, by and large, it's still a boys club. Let's not pretend otherwise. But I think the change will come uh, when the stories get better and more interesting and when people are engaged with those stories, whether they're rip-tickling family comedies or something about empowerment. I mean, uh, it's not, this is a, I, I think, uh, I mean, basically I want to stop coming on these panels where we discuss female, <laughs> female feminist things because there's no panel which is for men, right? Yeah. How can we improve the position of men in the industry? I feel like I want to stop coming. And up. you're right, and you're right. That's when, that is when you know you're getting somewhere, when you're not having to discuss it or debate it because it's taken for granted. Exactly. Right? That's what you do. And we were just discussing this uh, a little earlier, Ratna, because look, for me, to be completely honest, it's somewhat baffling to be having discussions about female boss and is there a glass ceiling and what is the ratio. For me, the reason it is baffling is that in my entire working career, I've always had a female boss, always, from day one. And I've always worked in an organization which is female majority. So I don't know any other way to be. Are you telling me it's not the norm? I kind of agree with Aparna there, okay? So uh, I think there are lots, don't get me wrong, even when I started out almost 25 years ago, there were lots of women who were working in the industry. There were lots of them in the creative field, but there were still lots of areas where women were not there, okay? So for instance, in pure production, you wouldn't hear of too many female heads of production. They were not there. In finance, there weren't that many women. You know, it's a little different there. And eventually, for it to cease to be a point of discussion, it needs to be a fabric of that creation. It just needs to exist, right, across departments, uh, 
then Vikram, you've been fortunate that you've had female bosses, and I know because we worked in a common organization, NDTV, but um, it brings, it's, it's a lot, of, the dialogue is very different, the conversation is very different, the ideas you'll pick up is very different if there's a female voice, the way you'll put the team together, the writing team, so many things, the way you'll cast, the way you'll market, everything changes when there is equal representation. It's a very different ball game. May I just add something to it? Yeah. I also feel that, you know, some of this change, uh, you have to be intentional about it, you have to be mindful about it, and you have to be relentless about it. To give you, a, uh, you know, an instance, we have made it a mandate uh, that every writer's room of ours has to have a woman. We are now working towards getting at least 30% women, uh, you know, across all HODs in all of our shows. It's a tall order, but it's an intentional action that we are working towards. I also just wanted to point out that there weren't so many women and there aren't so many women because, you know, historically we've not had those opportunities. There were no too many assistant directors, there were no too many assistant cinematographers, assistant editors, we never got the opportunities. So now to suddenly imagine that there will be a lot of women directors and writers, it's, you know, it's not possible because we've not had that opportunity, we've not had that training ground. So it's important for women who are now at the helm of affairs to make this intentional change. For us to have that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, business that we are talking about. To give you an example for, uh, you know, and I can only talk about Amazon, but uh, four more shots, please, you know, a show of ours, three seasons, because it was loved and absolutely viable for us, made in heaven, you know, helmed by women. For the first time, a character from the LGBTQIA plus community, you know, not, you know, as a friend or a sidekick, but headlining the show, you know, and accepted, and the show went into a subsequent season. Uh, you know, this year we put out shows like Dahar, like Jubilee, strong women. You have to make that intentional, mindful change for things to change. And I couldn't agree more, Vikram. You know, uh, it's 20 years to Indian Idol that we've been producing in this country. I did the first season, and I remember that when we went casting, right, these are real people we're talking about. They're bringing their real life stories to us, and we're portraying that. There were barely any women. This weekend, we had our finale, and when the top six lined up, there were three boys and three girls. It was a really proud moment for us. In season one, and I without any parents, And without any effort for gender balancing, so it happened organically. No, but I agree with it, uh, Aparna. Initially, we had to make it intentional. Girls would come to auditions, not tell their folks. And I'd have the job of calling parents and saying, please, it's very good, give it to them. Give it a chance, it will become a life, it will become a family, life ban jayega, right? To today, when parents come into the room with them and say, I want my daughter to pursue her dream, because we've had success 20 years of effort. Women. 20 years of intentional effort, and slowly the fabric is changing. So we've got miles to go before we sleep, but there is a silver lining. So does it require risk taking in some way that, you know, it, a there's a it. formula, there's a formula like which Like I said on TV and streaming, it's far easier. And I said it before this, and I'll continue saying it because there is an equal and easy opportunity. But where the money lies with the man, um, it's still very tough. And like I said, I might be going against the tide and saying this, but a lot of women wait for their husbands to buy their tickets in the theater. The choice of movies, that's where I was actually going at. Because you know what happens is, see, TV, streaming, these are platforms. And they're great, but when you talk about a really like a high-end, high big budget, 100 crore film, and you say, okay, Deepika is there or Alia is there, definitely the film because they're led by these women. But when you talk, start talking about slightly radical topics about women, on film and extremely conservative mediums like television, there's still resistance. I'd like to point out something. I personally, I, I'm a firm believer that in the last 30 years, from the time I came and people were calling me lady producer, there's a huge change. I had to, I mean, no one really knew what a producer, how can a producer be a woman? And me and my mom started the company, people thought, why aren't you using your dad's name? He is the big name. You both are the flunkies on the side. And uh, from there, it's changed a lot. But just recently this happened. I went for a meeting, and I went with a friend of mine who's a, 
um, another producer, he's a boy, and there were a lot of, it was a lot of executives. And there were lots of men in the room. And in five minutes, they had made a circle of people standing, and for almost five minutes, I was standing alone. And I was in shock because I was like, okay, this is funny. Why is this happening? And then a, a few minutes later, a few women were there and I was supposed to go and stand with them. And I was in a bit of a shock and this was like this high-end, top brass executive meeting. And I turned around and I told my friend, I said, does this happen often? And he said, I don't know. I really made it a point after that to ask a lot of women working in a few organizations around there. And they said, we are in a room and normally someone will turn around and say, okay, when these girls leave, we'll crack that joke. And I felt so like upset, not because of anything else, but because if it can happen to me at where I stand, which I feel is a bit, I've so-called reached somewhere, how tough it must be for women to feel um, included and therefore I feel we still are a long way because the mindset in so many organizations still hasn't changed. Richard, you must be facing the pressure in multiple directions. You're also known as being really outspoken. You don't hesitate to speak your mind. You're on social media taking it on, fighting trolls. You don't seem to care what, what anybody is saying. Do you have people looking at you and saying, yes, sab kyun bolti ho? Thoda low profile ho jao. Why are you so controversial? Jada bolti ho. Kyun kehne ki zarurat hai? Ab to bhoat kam bolti ho mein. <laughs> As compared to what I was uh, like, I'm I think. I'm not that sure. <laughs> I've been seeing recently. <laughs> I, I honestly, well, people say that, yeah, but don't be outspoken. But then there, there's a reverse also. They're like, wow, you're so courageous, for instance. And that can make your day and it'd be nice to hear. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I, like, I really don't think that, that we should bother, honestly. Because social media is meant to democratize voice. Like, everyone can have a voice. And you can also have anonymity. So then there's no um, sort of, uh, like, in very few cases will you follow up trolling with a complaint. And like I was telling you back there, I go and look at the DP of the person trolling me and I'm like, Bichara. And you know, then you just feel like it's <laughs> a paint peel or I was dukhi lag raha hai, bilkul na khush lag raha hai zindagi se. Do, do baar kuch bol ke khush ho raha hai, toh I'm like, tiki hai bhai. Plus, there's record unemployment and then these things are also paid gigs. So I'm like, good for you. You're making uh, bread and butter for your family. I support it wholeheartedly. Please go for that's, it. <laughs> that's, that's the attitude. That's the attitude. Arana, I just want to ask you about, you know, the glass ceiling now, rising all the way to the top. Now, there's a certain perception that, look, India is a land of paradoxes and women are treated really badly in many areas, but in many other ways, there's no glass ceiling. They can rise all the way to the top. You can have a prime minister, leader of political parties, chairmen of banks, you know, all of you. Is there a glass ceiling in India still or no? In absolute terms, yes. So, what Ekta is talking about, there have been enough leadership uh, meetings and summits uh, and platforms that you go to, and it's a sea of men. 